Hey, thanks for being here for another video. Uh, I'm doing forensics once again because it seems to be a topic that people really, really enjoy. So, since I'm going to be building uh, a new forensic machine that I need something portable, uh, and I don't really, I don't like to rely on pre-built forensic uh, dist Linux distributions, I figured why not film it and show you how I build my own Linux distribution. Well, I don't build my own Linux distribution. I'm not that crazy. But I'm going to build this portable system, which is a laptop. Uh, I'm going to install Debian and I'm going to install all my forensic tools that I use this way. Keep it lean. Don't have too many tools on there. I just have on there what I really need. I don't need to have all these other tools, which I'm not going to be using anyways. We're going to have to start from the beginning. So I'm choosing Debian because I, I like Debian. You can choose Mint. You can choose Ubuntu. It's it's really up to you. You can you can do other other ones, uh, but it's up to you. But before I start, don't forget to like it, share and subscribe this video. You're really helping me out. Otherwise, YouTube is not recommending these this videos to anybody. But if you hit like, you share it and you subscribe to my channel, then it really helps me out. So let's start. So so like I said at the beginning, I'm going with Debian because that's why I prefer. If you go with Ubuntu or Mint, it's still built on Debian. Um, the installation is a little bit easier with Mint or Ubuntu, but uh, I'm going to go with Debian. I'm, I'm a long-time Linux user. I've been using Linux since mid-90s. My first Linux installation was Slackware, which was, wasn't easy to install. I mean, it's not uh, Linux from scratch type of idea. It's not uh, Gentoo, but I mean, it's, it takes a lot of work, but it's not as crazy as the other ones. Over time, I switched over to Debian. Now I'm running Mint. Ubuntu and Debian on depending on what I'm doing. So how do we get started? So first you need a computer. It can be a desktop. It can be a laptop. It's whatever you need to use. Uh, if you if it's going to be a laptop, make sure you have eSATA ports. Make sure you have USB 3. You have lightning. Make sure you have all the necessary ports on your laptop. I mean, you can go with something lightweight if you're doing some lightweight work, but preferably you need something powerful. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, a gaming laptop for this task. Let's go with my desktop. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Etcher. The software you need to write the image of uh, the Linux installation image onto a USB drive. So this install this so download this install it and then uh, have it at the, at, at, at the ready so after you've installed it you're gonna go into debian.org and once you are Debian and also get yourself a USB drive four gigs or more preferably eight gigs all you gotta do is hit download and save it and download it I've already done that I'm not gonna be downloading it again take your USB drive plug it in now pay attention what you're doing here because you can erase your hard drive if you don't do this right here's Belena etcher opened up flash from file are we gonna choose Debian the one you downloaded so we downloaded the net installation which is only 345 megabytes uh, you can get the f two ISOs there's actually two ISOs uh, DVD 1 DVD 2 you can download it at like 8 gigs total if you want to get all that you can but you know for what we do we just need net installation so all the packages needed for your a particular build will be all will be downloaded as you need them we do want to keep it as lightweight as possible right i mean i do i mean when i build my linux machines i want to keep them as lightweight as possible i don't care for all the extra stuff been here now this is where you have to pay attention what you're doing i'm not gonna be responsible for anything that happens here you folks have been warned you don't have to use bill and etcher you can use other software you can use on linux you can use dd whatever works for you there's multiple ways to skin a cat uh this is just the method i'm using so we're going to choose our SanDisk Ultra Track. There it is. Uh, just don't choose any of your hard drives because you'll wipe them and there'll be no recovery there. So we choose SanDisk Ultra, go next, and just hit flash. And this takes a few minutes. If that pop-up comes up, just hit yes. In the background there, you can see my other machine, um, Linux. This, this one there is running Mint. I use it for, for many different things. I have my file server, some other few things, some forensic work, some imaging. Some imaging. There's a SAS controller on there. There's actually two of them. Linux I use quite often in here. I mean, if most of these forensic other tools and, and data recovery tools would, would run on Linux, I'll be definitely using it. Okay, so we're done. Uh, imaging is finished. So let's go over to the laptop now and install Debian. Okay, so now that we have the USB made, and we have a computer here, and like I said, I'm using a gaming laptop, but you can use whatever works for you. Uh, we're gonna plug the USB into the drive, uh, to the computer, and we're gonna boot from it. I can't record the screen yet because uh, this laptop, even though it has HDMI, it can't output to OBS. It just, HDMI doesn't get activated until Windows or Linux is booted up. So uh, for now, we, I'm gonna use a camera that's right there, right here. This camera is gonna record the screen until I get uh, Linux installed, and then we're gonna uh, record the screen. I'm gonna switch over to OBS that can uh, capture through HDMI. So uh, let's get booted up. So on this particular laptop, 
uh, to boot from USB is F12. There we go. So now it's booting. So we can go with graphical install. We don't have to. Um, we can do text. Doesn't matter. Let me just fix my mic. I don't want it to be rubbing against my shirt. So choose your language. So obviously I speak English, so I'll choose English. I also speak Polish. Uh, but uh, we're not gonna choose Polish because I uh, my Polish is not very good when it comes to IT stuff. Keyboard configuration doesn't matter. So now it's gonna load some drivers. Um, now this particular laptop, the Wi-Fi will not work until I load drivers. I don't care, I'm hooked up to uh, uh, Ethernet anyways. So there's the screen that uh, complains about uh, Wi-Fi. I could just find the, the drivers, but I don't really care for Wi-Fi, I can fix it later. Now it's gonna detect the network interface. Now, uh, a little bit of warning. If you have uh, already an OS installed on this machine, uh, be careful because you might wipe the, OS, the previous OS. So the drive that's in this computer, I'm gonna wipe entirely anyway, so I don't really care what's on it. Uh, but um, should you have Windows or, or on your test test computer, uh, there's an option uh, that's gonna come up soon that you can choose to install Linux side by side with Windows. Um, you can do that if you like. I am not gonna cover that. That's just something you have to uh, figure out on your own. Okay, host name. That's fine. Debian's fine. I don't care. Uh, domain, we're not part of the domain, so we're gonna skip the domain. Password. I'm gonna choose a simple password. I'm gonna change the password later. This is just for the sake of uh, being quick. I'm gonna use the simple password. Okay, we Easter time zone. Now, because we downloaded the net install of uh, Debian, it's gonna download a lot of packages. So I'm gonna pause at the point where it gets to that. And uh, we're gonna re resume once we get past that. But let's at least get to that point so you know what to do. And like I said, you can you can choose Mint, Ubuntu. I prefer Debian, that's what I like to use. I would install Slackware, but uh, that might be a bit more complicated for, for, for some of you. So we're gonna go with um, Debian. So this is where a lot of you will have to pay attention because like I said, if you have a, another operating system on this machine, uh, you gotta be careful because you're gonna wipe your disks. I'm not gonna be responsible if anything happens. You know, I'm putting a text right here. Not responsible. Um, just, just read everything you see on the screen. If you have Windows, in install side by side. Make a backup before you do anything. Don't be crazy. Um, you're gonna lose some of your, <laughs> you're gonna lose your data, and I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. So we're gonna use the entire disk. You can use set, set up LVM. You can set up encrypted LVM. Um, you know what, maybe I'll choose encrypted LVM since I am going to use this um, as my forensic station anyway. Um, so here's the uh, NVMe drive. You can choose here between um, entire everything on single partition or you can separate home and then var or temp partition. You can separate if you like. I don't like doing that. I, you know, if I had a huge disk, I would probably separate them. Uh, but for, for what I use, I'm going to choose everything on single partition. Yeah, we're gonna write to disk. He's gonna erase it here. Okay, wiping is done. Now I need to enter our encryption passphrase. So now I'm gonna partition the disks. Now I'm gonna format the partition and we're using LVM encryption. It's not necessary, but I mean, it's, it's always good to encrypt your data. Just, you know, keep a backup because if you don't, then you're gonna have some problems later. You don't wanna be doing that. The amount of phone calls I'm getting of people having issues, you know, they, they encrypt their computer or, you know, they have a MacBook that's already pre-encrypted running um, File Vault or they have a Surface Pro. And, um, even the Lenovo I bought when it came with Windows, it was already pre-set up with uh, BitLocker. So, you know, it's good to have encryption. It's really good, but it's, it's even better to also have backups because if you don't have backups, then you might be SOL on this, right? So now the base system is installing. Um, this will take some time, so I'm probably gonna pause the video here. Well, I was actually base installation. I should have read the screen, but anyways, uh, now we're gonna choose our package manager. We're gonna continue here. Um, you gotta choose the local one to you. So if you chose your country at the beginning of installation, you have to choose the closest server to you. I mean, just guess. Look what's look. Uh, look at the list and choose the one that's uh, you would think will be closer to you. Uh, we don't need HTTP proxy. Uh, the APT is gonna uh, scan the mirror and it's gonna find the latest packages. 
Okay, you can submit uh, if you want. I don't want to submit. Here's it's up to you. What do you want to choose? Um, if you're comfortable with GNOME as your desktop, then choose GNOME. If you're comfortable with XFC, then choose that. If you want KDE, you know, choose KDE. I'm more of a um, cinnamon kind of guy, and um, I also want SSH and I want standard system utilities. Cinnamon, and you know, I'm going to put GNOME in case I want to use GNOME and Mate. So I like to use these three. Cinnamon is my favorite, but. Um, if you like GNOME, choose GNOME. Whatever works for you, you choose the uh, the, uh, the desktop environment that uh, suits you. If you want something super lightweight, XFCE, LXDE, or LXQT, it's you know it's fine. It's really preference. This is why Linux is so great. You can really dial it down to exactly how you like it. You don't have to uh, uh, be stuck with one single user interface. Um, that's the beauty of Linux. Uh, like I said, I've been using Linux since um, uh, mid '90s, so. Uh, it's been a while. Okay, so now this portion will take a while. So there's, you know, 1800 packages to, to download and then to install. So here's where we're going to pause the video. Uh, I'm going to pause it right now. Uh, and then we're going to come back once we have passed that point. One eternity later. So we're in a home stretch now. We just finished uh, the installation procedure. So now here you can choose between the login manager you like. You know, GDM3 is fine. I mean, you can try LightDM. It's up to you. It's really the both almost identical. I uh, GDM3 is nice. Uh, LightDM is also nice. But we'll continue here. This is all about personal preference. It's really up to you what you want to um, what you want to choose. So now it's installing uh, the software. So this is like the home stretch now. It's we're almost done here. And I'm thinking uh, this video is getting quite long, so we're probably gonna have to end up splitting it into two. two two parts uh there's nothing wrong with that i just don't want the video to be 30 minutes it's, it's who's gonna watch it 30 minutes unless you like watching me that's that's great you know i can make them an hour if you like uh but let's just keep them under 20 minutes if it, if, if possible i ideally 50 minutes would be great and well, while we wait for this you know have you remember to subscribe to my channel and then hit like and all that stuff it really 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 helps this channel um i've gotten some a lot of good feedback on my videos lately um a lot of people messaged me and said they'd like the new videos, so we'll just stick to that. I know Flash and uh, things like this can get boring quickly because it's pretty repetitive and it's pretty complicated. A lot of people don't understand it, so uh, I'm not going to bore a lot of people with Flash. Uh, but I, I, am, I have some coming up soon. I did film uh, one I did recently, so hopefully that will be out soon too. But uh, let's stick to forensics. And on, 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 on Also, on, on related notes, not unrelated but kind of related um i've been sticking to my uh one video a week schedule um since january so i, I made i set up a goal for myself make a video every single week uh and you know we're almost halfway through the year i'm we halfway through, yeah we're pretty much halfway through the year now and um i am pretty much had a video out every monday plus lately i've been posting my tiktok videos on this channel um so sometimes once a day I'll post a video from TikTok on the channel, but um, I'm trying to set up the YouTube shorts, but it's not really working. It's, I, I don't know, I, it doesn't let me, let me try another phone here. Yeah, see the problem is on YouTube, I don't get an option to uh, post a short. So if I post a short, uh, it just gets uploaded as a normal video. I don't know, I wonder why. Um, it doesn't let me strange. Oh, well, well, I'll post them anyways. So while that's going, uh, this is going to probably take another 10 minutes. I'm going to pause here and then we're going to come back. <clears throat> okay, so installation is completed. Linux is installed. Now we're going to see if it boots. If it doesn't boot, then <laughs> I'm going to have to redo this. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got to remove the installation media. But don't forget to remove the installation media. If your system is uh, set to boot from USB all the time, you actually remove it. And uh, let's see if it boots up. So that's a good sign. We're gonna hit enter here. If you had Windows and you set up alongside of uh, Linux, then you will have um, then you will have a um, uh, option to choose Windows Boot Manager. Anyways, um, so now we have to uh, uh, enter a password to decrypt the, the drive. I think that was the password I used. Yeah, that was it. So. Anytime you boot the computer from this point on, if you enabled LVM, is you're gonna have to enter your password at the very, very beginning. The computer will not boot without it. All right, so we're booted up. Um, here we go. I 
Okay, this play manager is still not gonna not gonna push out to the HDMI, unfortunately. So here we are on our login screen. Um, so to choose between different uh, display um, window manage management, you can choose uh, right here. So before you put in your password, click the little gear icon. I did that uh, granted you installed this uh, login manager. Uh, so let's just go with cinnamon, put in our password, and here we are. So we are installed, we're running. Um, so because this is, uh, you know, uh, Debian is a little bit different, even though uh, Ubuntu and Mint is based on Debian, um, it's a little bit more bare bones, there's a lot of things missing, and, and there's a lot of things you have to install, unfortunately, you, you, nothing's gonna work out of the box. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, once you start installing packages, it's going to install dependencies and all that other thing. So uh, you'll get all that installed if you need. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is sudo will not work. So if you type in sudo, it was going to say you're not part of the um, uh, you're not part of the the sudo group, and this thing will be reported. Uh, I'll show you in a second. So if you open terminal here, and just change colors. I hate uh, white terminal windows. I don't know how sharp that is. So now, if you were to type uh, sudo, sudo snap, snap dick, as you see here, first guy is not not in the sudo which file. The incident will be reported. So to fix this, yeah, you're gonna do su uh, space dash. You're gonna put in your password. Okay, we're in. So now. Um, to fix that sudo su option uh, issue, it's a uh, user mod dash a capital G sudo, and you're gonna type in uh, forensic guy. So, on your system, depending on what user you put in and your system as your um, um, login, you're gonna put in put that in. Okay, now it's fixed. Now it's not gonna work right out of the box. If you tr still try doing sudo, it's not gonna work. Uh, you're gonna have to reboot or close. I think uh, sometimes just closing the terminal might be enough, but uh, I don't think so. Sudo synaptic. No, still doesn't work. So we're gonna have to reboot. Uh, also, there's one more thing I have to do. Um, we're gonna move the panel. I like it on top. So that's where I like my panel. Uh, also, uh, I'm gonna do some cosmetic changes here. I'm gonna make my windows dark, and I like dark themes. I like different wallpapers. So I'll change all that before part two is started. So I mean, this is all personal preference. You can decide what you want to do. You can do all these changes yourself. Uh, it's you know, I'm just gonna do what I like, uh, but it's totally up to you. Uh, we're gonna restart. So cinnamon will be our default now. So whatever you choose as a uh, as your last uh, window manager, that's gonna be the, the that's gonna be basically uh, next time you log in, it's gonna remember. So that's it. If you followed along and if you installed your Linux Linux, then you pretty much finished at this point. Um, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, you have your full Linux installation set up. Uh, all the updates are should be there because it is a net installation, so it downloaded the latest uh, packages. Um, Next week will be part two where we're going to set it up. I'm going to be using screen capture at this point and we're not going to be pointing cameras on screens. Um, and we're going to go through what's needed, how to disable auto mount and uh, make a bu bunch of different changes in, in this installation because we want to keep it more forensically sound than we possibly can. But yeah, make sure, make sure you like, subscribe and share this video. It really helps the channel. I appreciate all of you for being here and then I'll see you in the next video.